the Chase Thomas Podcast. For people who have nothing but time to kill. But we'll see. We shall see. We shall see, Matt Green. Um, UNC pulls away from South Carolina late in this one. Um, they get nine sacks on Spencer Rattler and company. Um, man, Matt Green, what did you? What did, was your strongest takeaway here? Where ACC coming away two and zero here um, with UNC and Florida State taking care of South Carolina and LSU in these uh, SEC ACC challenges. Um, so not a great look for. Um, the SEC, because I think all three SEC teams who played ranked teams over the weekend uh, lost, if I, my math is correct here. Is that right? Is that Florida, South Carolina, and, and LSU? Yeah. Uh, it's an overrated conference. I've always said so. <laughs> um, uh, who did you just ask about? North Carolina. Mm. Um, I was really impressed with North Carolina defensively. I think mm. um, this is my green line stat of the week, but I got a stat for you right here. Okay. North Carolina had 17 sacks last season. Hmm. Against South Carolina, they had nine. So over over halfway to their 2022 sack total. Um, and there's just not much the quarterback can do if he's just getting sacked like that. So mm. I um I was impressed definitely defensively with what North Carolina was, because that's that's been the biggest Achilles heel of this team. But it's also, I think it's kind of like similar to, to the Florida State North Car uh, Florida State LSU game. South Carolina did not look good in this game mm. to me. So like, I don't know, that, like it's a quality win for North Carolina. Like this is big, big to start their season, but I don't know. I have no idea what to expect from South Carolina this year. Like if they're not able, especially if this North Carolina defense isn't any good, like uh, they, they, if they just, uh, exposed, uh, South Carolina and they don't actually have a good defense, then it could get real bad for the Gamecocks. But assuming North Carolina is improved, like, I think this is huge. I think if they, they become a playoff dark horse, like if they can win a, this either Florida state, uh, Clemson, like, I think they're, they're a sneaky team out there. I don't know if they're a real playoff contender, but this is a uh, one step closer, like getting over, uh, south carolina in week one drake may looked really good in this game he had a lot of darts and obviously north carolina not having their number one pass catcher um who transferred in from kent state and that whole mess that he's not able to play at this point uh, malarkey yeah just a absolute joke that that's happening um shane beamer after the game calling the hot dog eating chain crew to start the mm. second half shane beamer going after the chain crew for that onside kick and them not being ready and all that that was that was weird um here's something that i thought was that felt pretty... like a turning point in the game the yeah getting that on onside kick and then just dropping the easy fourth down and fourth and short like that was that felt like you took this huge risk and then you got mm. nothing out of it and it just it felt kind of deflating for south carolina i would agree so here's some here's some stuff south carolina fans are gonna hate this you ready matt oh hit me Brad, Crawf uh, Brad Crawford on 247. South Carolina has played 10 ranked opponents during Shane Beamer's tenure and has allowed 364 points, which is good for 36.4 points per game. The only time the Gamecocks have given up fewer than 30 points under D.C. Clayton White versus a top 25 team was Kentucky last year with Will Levis out. I have more for you. Mark Ryan on Twitter. Through 27 games at South Carolina, Beamer is one game behind Will Muschamp, 16 and 11 to 15 and 12. Oof. There was a game, there was a moment in this game where t uh, South Carolina allowed a TD at the goal line following a timeout. They called and had 13 men on the field, and they still didn't shut out into the <laughs> University of North Carolina from punching I it in. I saw that. Everything's like, this is one of those things where I like. <sighs> When I looked at the South Carolina stuff, it's like Marcus Satterfield was the problem. He was the scapegoat last year, right? Now, and South Carolina fans had fun on Thursday night where Jeff Sims pick after pick and Nebraska's offense looked rough. And they were like, oh, see, see? I was like, all right, let's see. Dow Logan's. Shane went to bat for him really hard at that press conference where it's like, this is our guy. This is the guy we wanted all along, this, that, and the other. Not a great first showing. Spencer Rattler. It's hard to really figure out what he is at this point when you're getting pressured like that. He was like nine sacks, some of them ultimately falling on him, but like that's 
pretty outrageous. Like the offensive line was just not there. So a lot of that doesn't fall on Spencer Rattler. All that being said, this is what I wondered about South Carolina in this whole era. Like where are the wins coming? Where, what, like Shane Beamer can have the culture wins. He can have the TikToks. He can have all this stuff, the good culture and all that. Where are the wins going to come from? When are they happening? Who are they surpassing in this conference? North Carolina is ahead of them. You lose to North Carolina. You go to Tennessee this uh, this fall. You they, you don't get them at home this time. This is a better Tennessee defense. Tennessee is going to stomp this South Carolina team in a couple weeks. You look at the schedule. You get Georgia. Guess what? That's on the road at Georgia this year now, too. You look at this. This is going to get ugly in a hurry. So it's like all this is cool, the offseason stuff with South Carolina. But my thing was like, who are they surpassing? Who? Where are the wins coming on the schedule? Where, like, everyone loved to hate on Will Muschamp, and I'm not saying he was a great head coach. He recruited very well, just as well as Shane Beamer is doing to, for the most part. And they hit this wall, like, outside of Spurrier. It's just South Carolina is a very hard job. And what you're finding here is... And that's before Clemson was a powerhouse, too. Right. And now you're looking at it, and I'm like, they should be, like, 8-4 and four is, like, best-case scenario most years. And I think there's just this idea that, like, they were going to get past that and all this other stuff. And I'm like... I didn't see it. And it I just I think South Carolina is going to be fighting for bowl eligibility again this year. Yeah, and I think a a podcast with a Georgia and a Tennessee fan, we we're not we we're criticizing the South Carolina haters at times, but mm. it's just I don't know like you said, I don't I don't know where to find the wins. In this game, it's not it's the it's just one game, but it felt like such a barometer game, mm. like of which direction these two teams see like these two teams that could both go seven and five right coming into the season like which one can actually be an eight nine ten win team and which one's going to struggle to go to a bowl game like mm -hmm. i don't know if south carolina's losing to north carolina i think they have there's a chance they got you know four or five more teams on the schedule that are just that are as good or better